What's going on, y'all? Today, I'm going to give my first impressions of the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 in 2024. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> of course, this, this came out last year, but the thing about it, this device is not even six months old. <laughs> it came out in August of last year, so it's almost six months old, but it's not quite six months old. So this is not some old device. Now, I know people are probably waiting for the Z, Fo Z Flip 6. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it ain't gonna be much different than this. They're gonna improve the cameras. The screen is not gonna get any bigger. And the biggest thing about this device is really just the front display, honestly. I mean, that's what really make this so different than the other flips that came before it is the front, you know, the outer display. Other than that, it's really not that much different than the other flips that came before it. The, the, the outer display is the biggest change with this device. Now, of course, there's some minor improvements with the camera, but pretty much it's about that outer display. Now, you do get Gorilla Glass Victus, so there's improvements as far as that Gorilla Glass Victus 2. It has a nice build. I got uh, the mint green, which is nice. <clears throat> you got IPX water resistance. Now, this is good for four feet underwater, four feet for 30 minutes. Because most times when you hear them talk about the water resistance, they always say it's 1.5 meters. Now, for those... <laughs> of us that's not you know we don't really use meters in this country like that you know just say feet but nobody ever says exactly what five 1.5 meters is so i actually looked it up it's actually four feet ip68 is five feet so four feet for 30 minutes is going to be fine underwater now you do got your always on display now that's not the always on display this is the always on display right here so it's you know you can make it pretty bright now this is you know your lock screen when you turn it on but and you can change this to whatever you want so you got your always on display you got your side mounted fingerprint sensor you got your volume rockers right here underneath the build quality is really really nice it feels very very premium it has you know good weight to it it's not too light you know you got your face unlock that's pretty much typical samsung face unlock now when you open this thing up now, I can only really flip this really good when I don't have a case on it. Now, normally I'm going to keep a case on it because I could just handle the phone a lot better. And it gives it some more girth and more thickness, which I, which is what I like. I don't really like super thin phones. And this is definitely thin once you open it up. <laughs> now, with the inner display, you got a 6.7 inch 1080p dynamic AMOLED display. HDR10 plus 120 hertz refresh rate, 425 pixel density. Let me just tell you this. This screen is absolutely beautiful. It is phenomenal. It's great. It almost looks like Quad HD, but it's not. But it is beautiful. So you're not going to miss Quad HD resolution on this device. Okay? You're not going to miss it. It's beautiful. And let me, let me do this because I know it's probably... Like coming through super bright on the, um, you know, on the video. So let me turn this brightness down. Now I have it at, I'm using the extra brightness because I just like everything super bright. See right here? This is the extra brightness. I'm going to turn that off. All right. So now it won't be as bright. But anyway, let me just say this really quick. The battery life on here, I'm impressed. I got close to six hours of screen on time. And that was over 17 hours of usage at extra brightness. Now, just imagine how much better the battery life that I would have got had I not used extra brightness because that does use up a little bit more battery. But I just wanted to I just wanted to see what the battery life would be like if I used extra brightness and easily get you through a full day. Now, that's for me. I'm not saying that'll be you because everybody used their phone differently. Now, that's what me just having the screen on a lot using you know a lot of youtube uh videos regular um just regular videos surfing the net things like that i didn't use the camera at all you know i didn't use the gps nothing like that so and i don't game so if your usage gonna be so much different than that then you may use up a lot more battery but for me 
that's how I use my phone. You know, I, I barely even use the camera at all unless I'm going out doing something special, you know, vacation, hanging out with the family, me and my wife go out, something like that. Other than that, I don't use the camera. So battery life for me is going to be different than yours. But I'm impressed with the battery, especially because it's only a 3,700 milliamp hour battery. Now, I think it should be a 4,000 milliamp hour battery because the, the battery size from this has not changed from the Z Fold uh, 4. That was the same thing, 3,700. But I will say this, with the Snapdragon Generation 2 processor that's in this thing, listen, I told y'all about, you know, my S23 Ultra, how great that battery life is. That Generation 2 chip is the real deal because the battery life in this thing is really good, especially for a battery being this small. It's very, very impressive for me so far. Now... With the cover display, you got a 3.4 inch Super AMOLED display with 306, 306 pix pixel density. So it's still beautiful. It's still a beautiful display, no doubt about it. Now, I wish this was even going across, or maybe they could have just stopped it up here and just went across as opposed to having that dip down and then go back up. You know what that reminds me of? Let me show you something real quick. That's, I'm going to show you what, this remi what that little dip reminds me of. It reminds me of the Galaxy Fold. Reminds me of this right here. See that? Same little dip. <laughs> See, it's the same thing. It's just different. This one is at the on the cover display. This one's on the inner display. But it's the it's the same concept. And I don't like that. I just wish either they would have just went straight across, made it a little, you know, not come down as far. Or just make the whole thing and, and take it around the cameras like they did on the Motorola. But it is what it is. You know, maybe maybe that's something they may change with the um, you know, with the Z Flip 6. I don't know. We'll see. Now you do get eight gigs of RAM. You can get either 256 or 512 gigs of internal storage. This is a 512 gig of storage variant. Now, eight gigs of RAM is all you're getting, either. Either you get it with 256 or 512. They're only giving you 8 gigs. I didn't see no 12 gig variant. Now, it does come with dual stereo speakers that sound pretty good. I mean, seriously, for something this small, the speakers on here really impressed me. So, basically, I'll let y'all hear that when I do my full review. But the dual stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos is impressive on here. 15 watt wireless charging. That's That sucks. That's not impressive at all. 25 watt wire charging it's a joke but it is better than that of i think the z fold 3 yeah I, i'm not sure if the z fold 4 have um 25 watt charging i don't remember because i didn't have that device i did have the z flip 3 but i didn't have the z flip 4 and 4.5 watt reverse wireless charging of course you get bluetooth um 5.3 you got your 32 bit audio dac on here and with the colors, they do give you quite a few colors, except red. But you get mint, uh, graphite, cream, lavender, gray, blue, green, and yellow. So they do give you a lot of choices when it comes to the colors. Now, when it comes to the cameras, which you only get in two, besides the one you, you know, besides the selfie camera that you get, you know, on the inside. With these two 12 megapixel wide dual pixel with optical image stabilization 12 megapixel ultra wide shoots 4k at 60 1080p at 60 and with the selfie camera you get a 10 megapixel wide yeah i think i said 12 megapixel ultra wide i think i mentioned that but if not you do get a 12 megapixel ultra wide too now shoots video 4k 60 1080p at 60 selfie camera 1080 uh <laughs> 10 megapixels uh, wide shoots at 4k at 60 1080p at 60 so it is nice to know that whether you use these cameras or the selfie camera you're going to get 4k at 60 frames per second which samsung has been consistent when it comes to that now they're not they're very inconsistent when it comes to other things but with the cameras as far as the resolution they've been very consistent with that and the thing that the reason why I say that, because um, I watch, you know, I have a lot of different phones from different manufacturers 
you know, like Flossie Carter buys a lot of um, phones from like Oppo, Vivo, OnePlus, you know, all Redmi, all type of, you know, Xiaomi, all type of different companies. And none of them will put 4K at 60 on, the, on their front facing cameras. I don't know why that is. It doesn't make no sense. The only one, I think he just did a video today. I forgot the name of the phone. I, I know it's an Oppo phone, but I can't remember the whole name of the phone. But they actually finally put 4K at 60 on the front facing camera, which is, it makes no sense to be talking about a flagship device. Flagship device and 1080p at 30. Like, are you kidding me? A thousand dollars and I can't even get 4K at 60 on the front facing camera? It's ridiculous. So I hope that's something that these other manufacturers start doing because you shouldn't be charging people that much money and you're only giving them 1080p on the front camera. That's not right. But you will get that on here. Now, the only thing that's missing for me when it comes to this phone, no quad HD. Now, the only reason why I'm bringing that up because this phone was $1,000 plus tax when it was released. If you're going to ask people for $1,000, which is a very expensive for a phone, when there's other phones out here, you could get, they can do pretty much everything these phones can do, but a lot cheaper. It should be definitely quiet HD on this device. There's no excuse. No excuse whatsoever. Don't be, don't, don't give me some um, 1080p and you charging me $1,000. No way. No expandable storage. That's my norm. I don't like that. That's something that needs to come back. No headphone jack. No IR blaster. Now, this is a big one, too. To me, no Samsung Dex. Like, I don't get it. $1,000 and I can't even get something that you could just put in here. It's a software thing and you can't even install that in this phone. And I'm not the only one that's been talking about this phone not having Samsung Dex. It's not right. It should have it. No charge in the box, which y'all all know I don't like that. The presentation for this phone sucks. Like, all Samsung presentations suck these days. No case in the box and no headphones in the box. So basically nothing in the box, no accessories whatsoever, except a charging cable, which is unacceptable in my opinion. But other than that, I will say this, and I'm not an official flipologist, but I learned how to flip this because of Flossy Carter and I like doing it, but I can't do it with a case on here. It's just too hard. But I will say this. I am impressed with this phone. Now it's going to be narrow because of the width of it but you know you eventually get used to it if you just want something real small and real pocketable like this device is it's very small and pocketable compared to that of now what did i do okay i don't i don't know what i did with my s23 ultra at the moment but it's clearly nowhere near the size i mean the s23 ultra is much wider and much thicker but if you're somebody that wants something that's very small, very pocketable, this is a phone you just want to check. You definitely want to check out because you could just, you know, make it small and put it right in your front pocket. It's not going to take up much space or you could leave it in your pocket open like this. It's up to you. So you do have the option, but I'm sure most people, because it flips, they're going to break it down like this and they're going to flip it down. But I will say this so far, I am impressed with this device. I'm impressed with the screen quality, the build quality. Haven't tested out the cameras yet, but I like the speakers. I'm impressed with the battery life and I'm impressed with the performance. So my first impressions is I am impressed. If you can get this for like 500 bucks, you know, outright. And I know everybody can't buy a phone. You know, with that kind of money outright, most people get phones through their carriers. But if you're that type of person to have it where you can buy it outright, I would get it. If you can find it for $500, I would get it for that price. That's the price that I think it's worth. Between five and six hundred thousand dollars is not worth a thousand dollars, especially no quiet HD, no Samsung decks and all the other stuff I said is missing. Definitely not worth a thousand dollars at all. But if you can definitely get it for five hundred is definitely worth it. And like I said, coming from the Z4-4, this is definitely an upgrade because of that front display, period. Because now you can get your notifications. You can also use this to open up the phone, of course. Well, I, yeah, I got to unlock it first. Hold up. Let me show y'all. 
Yeah, I unlocked it. So you can set up where you can now this is it should be where you can get way more um apps here, but I'll talk about that when I do my full review. You can get, you know, your steps, you, you know, the calendar. You got a lot of widgets you could put on this front screen. You got your um your weather here, people that you call. Uh you could open up Spotify. You know, these are different wallpapers you can add that to timer uh voice voice recording the stock market if you're in the stocks you can watch and see what's going on with that uh of course this is your health again I mean, you could add more you know and it goes right back but it's nice that you can actually text on here you can answer phone call like everything is the screen is so big now to you literally don't have to open a device unlike before with the z full z flip four you always had to open up that device because you only had this really small little teeny display at the bottom. And on here, you can actually watch YouTube videos. Now, I know you may see, oh, it's too small. No, it's, it's, it's not too small to watch YouTube videos. Now, I just wish you can use other video uh, apps on here, but you can't. But you can watch YouTube on here. Like, you can't use Netflix and Prime Video and all those. Hopefully, at some point, you'll be able to. But you definitely can watch YouTube on here and it's not too small for you to really enjoy it if you just somewhere where you just really can't open it up but like i said i am impressed uh with this device it is currently rocking android 14 along with one ui 6.0 so it's up to date security is up to date and it's still going to get three more years of updates and four more years security updates so this phone is going to be good for a really long time if you, you know, thinking about upgrading, like I said, the biggest reason to upgrade for me is this front display. Now, the speakers are great. I don't know how the speakers are on a Z44, but the speakers on here are really impressive. The screen is impressive. Performance is impressive. But the main thing is this front display, just how big it is. And, you know, you don't have to open up the phone in order to check your notifications, make phone calls, just do whatever. You know, you can use this front, dis you don't know, this outer display. All right, you guys. So thank you all for taking the time to view this content. I do appreciate it. Hope everybody out there is staying safe, staying well. And I'll check you guys out in the next one. Peace.